Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm your host, Bradley Rindos, and along with my colleagues, Nate Marshall and Kyle DePace, we will be taking you on a magnificent adventure that includes the studies of nuclear energy. Wow, that's so beautiful. <laughs> nuclear power can be defined in two ways. One, electricity as it's generated from a nuclear reactor, or two, a country that has nuclear weapons. Maybe we shouldn't use that second one. As we said before, nuclear energy is nuclear power generated by a nuclear reactor. Nuclear power is used for electricity. Uranium, the fuel that nuclear power plants use, is a non-renewable energy source, so it will eventually run out in about 230 years. It is important to understand how a nuclear reactor works. Let's look into this. Actually, nuclear power is the same as fossil fuel or coal plants, in the matter where electricity is generated from steam spinning a turbine. It's how the water is heated to create steam that is different. First, fuel rods comprised of pellets of enriched uranium or plutonium are inserted into a box called a reactor that is filled with water. Then, neutrons are shot at high velocities that come into contact with the uranium or plutonium fuel, splitting the atom. These atoms then smack into the rest of the uranium or plutonium fuel in a cycle that continues the reaction. When the atoms split, there is an astronomical amount of thermal energy released, which heats the water. When the water boils, it turns into steam, which spins a turbine, which powers the generator, which creates electricity. Afterwards, the steam is cooled, turning it back into water, where it is reinserted back into the reactor to be heated again. Let's see that as a video. Nuke program. His nuclear program. For God's sake, it's nuclear. That's what I said, nuclear. It's nuclear. New. New. Clee. Clee. Er. Er. Nuclear. 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 Oops, wrong video. In most generating plants, whether coal, nuclear, or natural gas, some form of energy is used to heat water into steam. This steam turns a turbine that is coupled to an electromagnet called a generator. In a nuclear reactor, metal rods with enriched uranium pellets inside are placed into bundles, creating a fuel assembly. The bundles are submerged in water inside a pressurized vessel. The heat from split atoms causes the water to boil, producing steam that drives a turbine. Afterwards, the steam is converted back to liquid water and returned to the reactor core. Pressurized water reactors, or PWRs, were developed after boiling water reactors and work in a slightly different manner. In a PWR, the water in the reactor tank is under pressure to keep it from boiling, even though it reaches very high temperatures. In the steam generator of a PWR, water passes through thousands of small pipes. The heat in the pipes turns the water to steam which then drives the turbine. The turbine powers the generator, which in turn produces electricity. Here is where the process differs from a boiling water reactor. The reactor water is now pumped back into the reactor tank and heated again. The steam from the turbine is cooled in a condenser, and the resulting water is sent back into the steam generator and heated again. Let's take a look at the progression of nuclear energy throughout the world. In 1945, the first nuclear weapons were launched and were successful. In 1951, the EBR-1 reactor is the first to generate electricity. In 1954, the Obninsk reactor is the first commercially available power plant. In 1986, one of the reactors at the Chernobyl power plant explodes, releasing thousands, 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 thousands of radioactive uranium particles into the atmosphere. It was a very tragic day. 2013, climate guru James Hansen believes nuclear power has saved an approximate 1.8 million people based on the lack of air pollution deaths. Nuclear energy has now been in use for 64 years. Do you notice any patterns of where the nuclear power plants are? That's right, they're on the East Coast. This is because the East Coast uses more power than other areas of the United States. 
It also makes sense that power plants are along the coast because they need a constant supply of water to make power. It is common for someone to think that nuclear energy isn't clean, when in reality it is more clean than most other energy sources. Since there is no carbon in the fuel, there is a low amount of air emissions from the plant itself, including gases like CO2. So there's a lot of pros and cons to all the resources for energy. Um, nuclear is definitely known for being the clean, safe, reliable, carbon-free resource. Uh, so that's probably our biggest uh, selling point. The fact that we um, don't emit, emit any greenhouse gases is, is the most important part about nuclear. One of the few environmental downsides to nuclear energy is the amount of water it uses. Sometimes reactors use water from lakes or oceans, which affect wildlife. Also, there is the minuscule yet possible chance of a nuclear meltdown, which would contaminate wildlife within a large area. The U.S. consumes 3.886 trillion kWh kilowatt hours, which means a thousand watts being used in an hour. So the U.S. uses 3.886 trillion hours of 1,000 watts being used. That's pretty complicated. 20% of that being nuclear, meaning the U.S. consumes 777 billion 200 million kilowatts per hour of nuclear energy each year. <laughs> Let's calculate how much this costs. Uranium costs roughly $20 million a year for fuel. Operation of a nuclear power plant costs approximately 1.5 cents per kilowatt per hour meaning 777 billion 200 million kilowatt hours times 1.5 equals 11 billion 658 million dollars per year storing the radioactive uranium and plutonium waste costs approximately a tenth of a cent per kilowatt per hour meaning 0.1 times 777 billion 200 million kilowatt hours costs approximately 777 million 200 thousand dollars and the capital cost to build each plant is approximately $2 billion. When you add this all together, nuclear power in the United States costs $14,435,200,000 per year, plus an additional $198 billion for the infrastructure we currently have. Did I get the number right? I got it right! That was like five lines. What are some of the advantages of nuclear energy? Since nuclear power plants use an insanely small amount of fuel to boil water, once they are built, the upkeep costs are significantly smaller than those of a coal or fossil fuel power plant. Uranium, since there is no carbon content, does not release harmful gases, greenhouse gases, like CO2, into the atmosphere. When you're looking at solar and wind, the sun doesn't always shine and the wind doesn't always blow. So what, what are you going to do when that happens? Um, and that's probably the biggest comparison when you're thinking about um, renewables to nuclear. We're consistent, we're 24 seven, completely reliable. Although it is not well known, there are actually significantly fewer deaths per year, even when you include disasters like Chernobyl and Fukushima, rather than coal and fossil fuel alternatives. People tend to think about the accidents that have happened. So we've seen in the United States, we've seen Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, Fukushima, and Japan. All of these accidents are uh, opportunities for lessons learned. We want to reassure the public and we want to talk to them about this. We want them to understand that we take these accidents very seriously. We don't want to see anything similar to any one of these accidents happen ever again. And we're very concerned about making sure that people have access to the answers that they're looking for. Science. So I would think that the direction that we should be going in most certainly is investing in these clean, safe, reliable, carbon-free, emitting-free resources for energy. So in the United States, we did something that a lot of other countries didn't do. We established a third-party um, uh, best practices and standards uh, organization. They establish um, regulations and sort of raise the bar when it comes to safety and security at nuclear power plants. No other country has done that. No other organization has done what the nuclear industry has done because we're so invested in best practices and we're so invested in lessons learned. We wanted to figure out what we could do um, better and, and make sure that we were um, better prepared. 
The main disadvantage of nuclear energy and why it's not fully implemented into the United States is because the capital cost, the cost it takes to build the plant, is really high. This is because there are additional levels of security needed to maintain the radiation and the extremely high energy levels inside the reactor. Plants also must meet strict government regulations. This is to minimize the chance of a nuclear meltdown. Used fuel, like uranium and plutonium, becomes radioactive. It has to be stored for hundreds of years in specialized storage containment units, or at an astronomical cost. Recycled, enriched, and reused in a reactor. After reading a study conducted by students and professors at MIT, we were able to walk away with some valuable and important insights at what the future of nuclear power holds for civilization. The report found four key points that need to be improved upon in the nuclear power concept. Cost, safety, waste, and proliferation, or the increase in facilities. The study concluded that nuclear power is not currently cost competitive with coal and natural gas, and also supported a once-through method where uranium is used once and then stored rather than being recycled since the reprocessing system presents unwarranted proliferation risks. They also believe the worldwide supply of uranium is sufficient to fuel the development of 1,000 reactors over the next 50 years and government should prioritize development of the once-through fuel cycle. If incentives were shifted to focus on this once-through fuel cycle, it seems quite rational that tests should be constructed to optimize this strategy as it relates to MIT's four crucial detriments. What's obvious is that there are only a few ways to reduce CO2 emissions, increasing current power plant efficiency, more widely implementing renewable energy sources, or an increase in nuclear power usage. In 2002, nuclear power supplied the U.S. with 20% of its power and 17% of the world's power. However, official predictions believe nuclear energy usage will increase by a small 5% in 2020. Although nuclear power is not currently cost-efficient, we, along with scientists at MIT, believe nuclear options should be retained precisely because it is an important carbon-free source of power that can potentially make a significant contribution to future electricity supply. We're definitely a, um, a clean, safe, reliable resource, and I certainly believe in the future of nuclear. It's one o'clock. It's one o'clock? You ready? Yeah. Yoga class at two o'clock. How do you pronounce that word? Have fun at yoga. Thanks. Nuclear.